the first thing on the list is mixing after a feeling or a theme. And we have to always keep ourselves reminding that we are not only producers, but we are also storytellers. Write this on a paper, hang it on your wall. This is really important. And try to remind this to yourself every time you are making a new track. So we have a peak time techno loop over here. It's a pretty decent loop as well. For me, this is a powerful track. It makes me feel like I have the power to do anything I want to do. But the lead sounds could definitely be better to give me even more energy, more pump. Really cool sound. It's actually coming from my Berlin bundle. If you haven't seen it, I have just released an Ableton Live Berlin bundle, including Ableton presets with operator wavetable and analog and plus sample packs. I will put it somewhere here so you can take a look. The first thing that I'm gonna do, I want this sound to be a bit more plucky. So I'm gonna just open this up, adjust my pluckiness a little bit more. So I keep the old one. So the new one sounds like this. I'm considering adding another layer on bottom, but this will act like a top layer, very short, but very plucky, so that it can give me really a power. I'm just gonna go back and pick something from my um, Berlin bundle. Now we put down the notes one octave below. When we put on top of each other, they sound like this. Now it feels much more powerful or it feels much more punchy. And on top of that, because I still want the sound to be super punchy, super heating, I'm gonna layer this with a percussion sound. And in this case, we are using this snare sample, super simple. And together. So I'm gonna group them up because I want to group process them a little bit more to get this really glued sound out of it. So what we are going to do first, put an overdrive. A good amount of drive, I'm gonna put the tone a bit brighter scale. So it, this just makes it really bright and it makes it really feel like one single sound rather than a lot of layers. And after that, I'm gonna get a glue compressor, but you can use a regular compressor as well. I want to pop the attack a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a compressor setting with a very slow attack. So we are gonna increase the attack all the way. And on the other hand, very fast release. So that means that attack will be slow, so the initial hit will be there, but then release will be very fast. And once the sound drops down that level, we will cut it very fast. So you will hear it a bit more here when I play it. That initial pop, pop, pop sound is hitting a bit harder, basically. If we go back here now, I want to sign it to a reverb to give me that whole feeling. So I already have reverb here, actually. We have a big cathedral type of reverb, sidechain the kick. This is important. So you want your long reverb sidechain the kick so that they don't mash too much and they don't destroy your groove. So you still want this pumping feel out of this long reverb sound. If we start signing a bit. On top of that, you see that there's much more compression. Remember that short sound that we have here, the high layer? Now we're gonna use it as a source to side chain to the reverb. So this initial hit of our lead sound will be having less reverb. So here we go here, 11, there we go. If I listen to the reverb itself, we will hear it a bit more. So it will be very fast ducking on the reverb. But the more important thing now, everything should be leveled up together with the track. Let's try that. Let's, let's go here first. You can definitely hear it's still really loud. Like it's really in the front, but it's exactly the feeling that I'm going for. But I have another idea here. I'm gonna go to group and get another compression and I'm even gonna sidechain my lead sound of the kick. It won't be that aggressive, but it will still give this kind of going up ramp up effect. So 
So what it happens like then 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 that sound is more pronounced because of that pumping effect. Or well, it has also the effect on our loudness because of that. <laughs> Sounding good, I will definitely also consider now the horn sound. Horn sound is very aggressive, very cool as well, coming again from my Berlin pack. I want to focus on that sound more, but that also gives me the opportunity to hear right here. I'm going to put the auto filter. The main idea is put the horn in the front uh, in the beginning like this. And then bring it in so that I just give you first the warning that with big horn something is going to happen. And then I bring in my bleed sound and then I even have rights here and complement with the rights. So whole story is complete and maybe volume up the horn as well. So let's take a look. And this is exactly the vibe that I was going for from the start. And one final thing that we are going to do now is just doing an A-B compression. We don't have automation here so that we can just quickly A-B. We will start with the original one. Again, the new version helps me much more with the feeling that I'm trying to give. And that is the most important thing. And this brings us to the second trick. And second one is really important as well, using the right sample. This can have really detrimental effect on your track if you are not really careful with it. To make it super clear how much effect it can have, I have actually prepared a loop here and I intentionally picked the wrong samples. So we have a nice melodic house loop here sounding like this. We will start with of course our low end and we have this cool groove going on here. I think it's quite obvious why this kick wrong. First, I think it's too distorted, kind of more main room techno kick. And it's also too long because we have this nice bass here. These two together doesn't really work at all. It's like urdu, urdu, urdu. So what we are going to do is pick something smoother from my smooth kick sample pack. So we can literally take a look at how they look. This is the new kick, smooth kick, I will call it. Sounds like this. A good thumb, relatively medium sized tail compared to this one. This one is aggressive and long tail. Main room techno style, more like a deep melodic techno style. So we're gonna play this part with both kick so that you can feel a bit more. What we need to do, maybe level up a little bit or level down a little bit. So let's take a look at the low end. Now, sounding like this. Cool, right? Much more in line with what we were looking for. But of course, it doesn't end here. Everything is wrong in this one. The other thing I will say, the hats. And I want to take a look at the issue with the hats. Listen here. The main issue here is like, you can see I have nice LFOs, nice EQs all together. It's actually nicely prepared. But the problem is all the samples are sounding same. We are kind of having this sound this sound with the shaker and the shaker tail. This could have been maybe focus on these nice shaker samples and make this sample a bit brighter and then pick another two different hi-hat samples to complement them rather than just picking the same sound over and over again. So what we're going to do, just switch the samples one more time. So these are new samples. The main difference is I just changed the sample, didn't touch anything else. And it sounds like this now from here. 
not with breeds much more. We get a bit brighter sound, a bit air. We can hear almost everything. Other problem was here actually when we come in to do and adding another shaker loop, it was just overwhelming with old samples. It's a big mush of dirty hi-hat sound, but here... So clean and pleasant. And again, only difference here is the sample selection. I didn't touch the sand, I didn't touch anything else. The only difference is the sample. But the one thing that extremely bad here is also the clap. It's like this big room style clap sound here, or the snare sound. A boom, boom. It just didn't work. In this case, we should have something like this. I prepared this in advance because it has a bit different layers. We have this clap together with this short snare and a nice tail. Together again. Nice, smooth, comfortable sound, I will say. Take a look how much difference this single clap sound makes in a track. I will again A, B. It just passes so much more to the sound. So again, what I'm going to do now, A, B from old sound to new sound. We will start with the old one and then switch between. So let's go. That is the difference that can make just picking the right sample. So be really careful about picking the right sample. Don't try to pick something that sounds really good isolated. Just try to pick something that works with the feeling that you are going for and the overall mix of your track as well. And this brings us one of the more mysterious and advanced topic, which is the parallel processing and using the returns a bit more creatively. I have prepared this techno loop. These days they start to blend together. These days they start to change. Really cool sound, but there are a couple of really crucial things that are missing. First, the percussions. We don't get this really whole ambient feel. We will do a kind of a bit more parallel chain here by creating a return. The main idea is getting this whole reverb, right? So we need a reverb that reflects that big feeling. And I will start with the percussion. So I want to feel this percussions big and large. Now this is a too clean reverb. Yes, the whole feeling is coming together, but we have to deal with a couple of things. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually add a compressor because this is a bit percussive sound. I'm going to catch those super transients in the beginning before it hits the reverb so that I avoid this f f reverb sound or reflection in the reverb. Take up the makeup. And the other thing, as we mentioned, this is a clean sound. I want this dirty techno reverb sound, right? So we're going to go for overdrive. So we're going to focus on a bit darker area here. Let's solo this so that you can hear a bit more. Darker tones. Maybe a bit less drive. It brings this really dark vibe into the sound. Maybe we can put an EQ, slightly cut the super lows in case there are some. So I'm not really interested in this part, right? And give it a cool boost here. Yeah. And then we can cut super highs. Everything is cool, but I'm not really getting this stereo vibe out of it. So what I'm going to do is bring another EQ8. Uh, and this one is quite simple as well. So you go to mid side mode and then you go to the sides here. And here I want to make it a bit wider, but I don't want it wider super lows. I want to get a bit width here, a bit mid-high tones. 
just like that. And finally, with the perks together. Without the effect. And finally, side change the kick. Long delay, I don't want this to distort my pumping feel in the track. Side change the kick. It doesn't be super aggressive, but slightly. Just like that. And let's still take a listen together with the track one more time. Without. With. If you are enjoying the video up to now, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button and comment below. It really helps me and the channel and keeps me motivated to make more videos like this in the future. But let's jump back now. We have this really big room style techno track. This needs a air and it brings us to another trick that you can, another parallel process that you can do. Return channel. We will start in this case though with an EQ8. Whatever we sign, we don't want the low end. We want the air of that sound and then we're going to go for reverb compared to the other one this time we're going to focus on the high end so i'm going to bring this up low cut here highs maybe room size is fine experiment with sending a bit hats here it is the perfect place to make your track more stereo and give out of air out of stereo field in this case i prefer this one because this has also an extra air option in it so it has a bit more high end and you can actually focus on high end as well i'm gonna add a bit saturation just like that the horrible thing with this plugin is that it doesn't have gain compensation so you have to bring output down all the time dancer more air just like that I'm going to bring again my EQ8. We're going to do something similar that we did earlier. Go to MS side and to the side. I'm going to boost this and bring something like this. Opening up the sides. And I'm going to go to meets and I'm going to bring down this. See how much this push the sounds around. I prefer to have a channel EQ because now when I play with the hi-hats, I don't really know which part I would focus. So what I tend to do, put the mids like a bit boost and move it around and see in which part this air sits best. Then you move. The best thing that you should do actually play with the track and see how it affects it. Final thing that I will edit here is actually side chain compression to the kick. If we do NAB here now, and the other thing that I tend to do is what I call drum crash, and this is a very common technique. You put a, something like a glue compressor, parallel process your drums. And what we can do in this case, for example, try to snare to bring up a bit crunch in it. Solo this. Really crush it, like you flatten that uh, transient. And then you add some type of distortion afterwards. But I feel like there's like a, a resonant snare sound. I'm going to just take that off. Put the cue down. Here as well. Now I'm soloing too much, so we have to listen to this clap. Now we have to listen to the track.
again, this is not only made for snare. Now you can start sending things. You can start sending your percussions. You can send your plugs, for example. You can send your hats, especially off hats tend to work really nice with this type of sound because it's like a kind of a snare, right? If we go for our off hats, yeah, this should work nicely, for example. Like that, right? Together. Let's do an AB again so that you can hear the difference. Huge difference. For me, everything sounds a bit more in the right place, plus everything sounds also a bit more glued. Cool technique. This brings us to the final point. The first three points, if you are a beginner, it's really hard. You don't know where to start. And fourth point is something that can help you. And it is referencing your track to a track that is similar to the vibe that you are going for. There is no shame in it. Even the most advanced audio engineers or producers does that. The main reason is when you are working on a project for a really long time, your ears tend to get tired of the sound and you start to see the ghosts, the things that doesn't actually there. The other thing that I would also suggest, if you can try to find a track in the same key that you are. And the second thing is that when you are looking for a reference track, those tracks are mastered. So they are pretty loud. When you are in the mixing stage, you will have probably different loudness. So what I will suggest is that get a span and try to find some place that are kind of less loud and you can clearly hear the kick because the kick will be our anchor point and that's how we will reference our own track so i'm gonna loop here because i know there's a if you zoom into the waveform here you you see actually the kick is not really really hitting to the limiter which means that this is kind of a naked point for your kick so just take this part out bring it down and take a look at the loudness of that kick. You see we are hitting around minus 3 something. So minus 3.8. You go back and then you bring this minus 3.8. So that when you compare the rest of the tracks, it won't be that apples and oranges. But there is still a problem. This is probably went through a distortion chain, maybe a maximizer, maybe other kind of processing. So here, when we are listening here, it will still sound louder than your track. So what I'm trying to say, if I play here. So it's a bit dirty part of the sound. So what you have to do, you go to your track now, or you go to your master, put a limiter. I can tell you something that will probably work is that push your limiter around 3 dB. So you will be, if I go to, for example, Pro L to show you a bit more. So this being your track, let me sort so, so you don't think you are doing this reference track. Put your track like this, put a limiter on your track. Right at the moment, we are not clipping at all. So push the limiter around 3 dB. So you should be seeing that you are hitting that limiter so that you are getting a similar results that the reference track that you are comparing. Depending on how aggressive mastering is, it can be around 3 dB to really up to 6, 7 dB. The other thing that you have to be careful is that this is only the chorus part. You also have to understand how the break works. So the things, how loud the things are. Go to quietest part of your break and listen here and see the loudness here when everything settles down a little bit. And then you open your span like we did before. And you look here how loud the things are. Another thing that is very useful is taking a look at the overall frequency distribution so that you can also understand how you get, for example, if you are looking for a dark vibe, you see how you get that dark vibe by looking look at the frequency distribution here. Meaning that like we have a really missing area here. 
and this is being air that we hear the air. And lacking this part makes it really dark. And other thing when you are referencing is that you should be also taking a look at the overall frequency distribution. In this case, I will show it in the tonal balance. There's a tool that I think very useful, especially for the referencing purpose. This is really telling you how the frequency range of this track compared to your reference track. So what you can do in this case, I can go here, create a target from audio file and pick my own track. And when I pick my own track, it creates the curve for me so that I can see that it is like this. And then when you play your own track, let's say like here. And you can see actually how the frequency distribution is going. So it is a really tool for you to understand how overall frequency distribution compared to a reference track. And yeah, I think that was it. Uh, drop your comments below if you have more tips to do other producers. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.